Welcome, everyone. Um, Julie Samako, owner of Southern Charm Rees, where we make beautiful rees and teach you how to make and sell them. And in this video, I am so honored and pleased to welcome Lori Jacobs with Hardworking Mom back again to my channel. I think I've had you like on once other time. Maybe we did a live together. Yeah, um, but yeah, but I just want to welcome you back. Um, so I have been working um, with Lori on and off with projects last year, actually a couple years, but really heavily last last year and into this year. And um, I'm just so um, honored to have her. I love her to death. Actually, Lori lives in my area. And yeah. you would think that we would like always be seeing each other and we never <laughs> see each other <laughs> no, we <don't. laughs> unless we're texting each other on the phone. Okay. So, um, but welcome Lori to my channel. Um, and let's see, I was going to, uh, just, if you could, for those of you who are new to the channel, you know, don't forget to follow and subscribe. Um, if you're, especially if you're watching the replay, we're at the end of this video and I'm going to go ahead and let Lori sort of introduce herself and give a little bit of a, a bio so that you guys get to know Lori as much as I get, to, you know, know Lori. Well, I am honored to be here. Let me start with that. Uh, I am Lori Jacobs and I own hardworking mom. And that is the name, the actual name of my company. It's a funny name, but. Well, you, heart, you work hard and you're a mom, so it makes complete <laughs> sense. <laughs> my husband actually came up with that name, but it was quite a long time ago. So um, I'm a CPA and I was a full-time CFO for many years and really just wasn't where I needed to be. I really felt like I should be doing something else. I wanted to stay home and take care of my children and I take care of my parents. They live with us. So I started looking for a way to do that. And I happened upon Facebook. I watched Julie and I decided to start a rethink business. <laughs> so that's what I do full time now. And it's wonderful. Hard work, but it's wonderful. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, um, so give me some, I mean, I know why I started my YouTube channel, but why did you start your YouTube channel? Well, actually I started my YouTube channel because my children wanted me to get at that time. They were younger and they were watching YouTube a lot. So when they watched YouTube, I watched it because I wanted to make sure what they were watching. And I did it because I wanted to share something that was helping me. I had a very stressful job. And making wreaths really was therapy for me. So I decided I was going to do a channel. In the beginning, it wasn't for a business. It was just to share what I was doing. And I was really inspired by watching you and Trendy Tree. And it was really great. So I thought, I'm going to do that too. And so I just did. <laughs> so, and you, so what type of topics do you put on your YouTube channel? So I really have um, kind of a wide variety on my YouTube channel. I do a lot of wreaths, but I've also done a lot of business tips. So I, I am a CPA and, and ran businesses for many years. So I do have a lot of tips on there. And I just have a lot of different techniques. And I'll talk about, you know, different ways that you can save time. Efficiency is everything. Something I learned in my professional life. And I just really show everything that I think that people can benefit from. We do bows a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody loves the bows. <laughs> bows and signs. I've started making signs. So I have um, signs and cricket on there now as well. So, so you've, so I like that you've got a multitude of things yeah. all geared towards the creatives, all right? The makers absolutely. of the world. Um, yes. So why do you think that having a YouTube channel um, helps, you know, a creative business or maybe even an Etsy shop? It really helps because you can drive your traffic from YouTube to your Etsy shop. So one of the ways that I went from zero to almost 3000 sales on Etsy was from YouTube. Um, so I really was able to start driving traffic over because what happens is you're on there and people are going to ask you, where did you get that from? Where can I buy that from? You know, where is your shop? Because they're going to ask you those things and then you can just 
have it in your link, have it ready and start sending them over. And it really makes it much easier to start sending people over to your shop. Right. I like that. And we are getting a ton of questions about YouTube already. You guys keep asking your questions. We're definitely going to get to them. Um, um, I, let's see what, so we're, we talk, we're really talking about YouTube for creatives, how we can utilize it to um, drive traffic to our Etsy shops. And I want to know, what would you say would be the, like the big differences between uh, Facebook and YouTube? Because we have a lot of people, n not that there's anything wrong, you know, with pushing, be on Facebook, be on Facebook, be on Facebook. And I agree, we should be on Facebook. However, I want to know what you think are like the benefits, you know, the pros and cons of maybe versus, you know, YouTube and Facebook for your creative business or your Etsy shop. Absolutely. So this is one of my favorite topics. <laughs> so Facebook, when you're talking about Facebook, Facebook is a community, right? So people are there to interact with their friends. And if they do see your live and they come on, they're more visiting than what I would say shopping, right? So, and they may not even be your target audience that actually sees you because on Facebook, you're seen because people are sharing your lives or you just come up in their feed and then they're getting on and they may just be visiting with each other. And the biggest thing about Facebook is when you do a live and it goes on your feed, on your page, it gets buried very quickly. When you're on YouTube, you don't have that problem. So your videos are evergreen, they're always there. You can organize them in a fashion that people can find them very easily. And it is much easier to find a targeted audience because people are only gonna see your videos if they are looking for the specific keywords that are on your video. So you don't have that problem with the wrong audience coming in and they may just really enjoy watching you because it's fun, but they're not really going to be a customer. On YouTube, you just have a much better way of finding your actual customers, people who are looking for the solutions or the products that you have, because that's what they're looking for. They're specifically, they are looking for that. I think too, for me, I think the biggest difference has been that um, Facebook, like you said, you do a Facebook live or you do a video or something like that, and it does get quickly buried. Um, you have to, you know, maybe renew it or reshare it or, you know, things like that. However, with YouTube, it actually shows up in Google search. Yes, so it does. It when does you go, YouTube. when any of your customers or anybody goes to Google and even searches for, um, you know, a yellow tulip wreath for front door, it's going to show YouTube videos where it doesn't necessarily show anything that's any videos that are displayed on Facebook. Um, that's right. I think that it definitely helps get seen um, regarding Google um, for sure. It does because Google does own YouTube. So of course they're going to show their content and they're not going to show Facebook's content. So both uh, YouTube and Google are search engines and they're search engines that are used often. So when people want to know how to do something, they're going to go to YouTube and look it up. So, That's, or, or they're going to go to Google and then find a YouTube video to, to watch. Yeah, that's right. And then um, there was something else I was going to say. Oh, the other thing too is that um, I can have a video on YouTube that I put out there like three years ago and it's still, I get comments on and questions and people viewing it where that never happens on Facebook. So the longevity is is a lot better um, and I also feel like it's easier for sharing where if you do a video in Facebook Facebook allows you to share it with other Facebook users and keep it within right. the Facebook platform whereas on YouTube they make it very easy to share it on Twitter and Pinterest and um, Instagram and all these other platforms that you can it's just easier to share uh, the content so I mean that's some of the differences that I like personally. Right. I agree because 
And that's the thing with Facebook's community. So Facebook is a community and they're that jealous boyfriend. They don't want you to leave their platform. They want you to stay right there. YouTube is very different. So they're driven by a very different concept. Their algorithms are different and they are fine with you sharing because they know ultimately you're going to come back to YouTube. So they have a totally different uh, business concept than Facebook does. So it is a very different social media platform than Facebook is. I was going to say, what do you wish you knew before you started your YouTube channel? I wish I knew, uh, first of all, <laughs> all the steps that it takes to really get a video seen because it's really easy to start your YouTube channel. It's yes. super easy, just like it is a Facebook page. But if you're not following the correct steps, you're just really wasting your time. It takes a lot longer to get found. I wish I had known how powerful YouTube was going to be in growing my business. I wish I had known that if I really spent time concentrating on it, that I would grow exponentially faster. So in the last year, I really concentrated on YouTube and it pretty much doubled where I was. So it really, I just wish I had known then what I know now. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, optimizing my videos would have been priority. You know, and I, I didn't even know what tags were or <laughs> right <laughs> screens. And, mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, that sort of was the same thing for me. I wish I had started it sooner. Um, in fact, I, even when I started, I wasn't even doing it right. I was just throwing stuff up there. But then when I started seeing customers coming from my YouTube channel, like a lot of customers, I thought to myself, yeah all right, maybe I need to spend some more time over on YouTube and figure out <laughs> what I really need to do in order to make this work a little bit more efficiently for me. So, um, but I too wish that I had started YouTube a lot sooner and had been more consistent with it for sure. Um, yes. let's, let's see, what do you, okay, when you see other creatives using YouTube, what do you think is one, one or some common mistakes that they make? Uh, one mistake that I see that people make, and it, it's a it's a funny thing, is that they will record things on their phone in portrait view. And I think it, people don't realize that that may be fine on Facebook, but it's really not on YouTube because people watch YouTube not only on their phones, but they watch it on iPads and televisions as well. So you want to make sure that you're filming in landscape. Uh, that's just a really common one. Um, the other thing is that people are not optimizing their videos. And so the reason that they're not growing at the pace that they should is they're not optimizing their videos and they're talking too much. So unlike Facebook, if you go on YouTube, they don't like it if you are saying hello to every single person that's coming in. It's totally fine to talk. You want to talk. You want to engage your audience but you want to engage your audience in a specific way and you don't want to answer questions without repeating what the question is. So those are very important on YouTube. People will get very frustrated with you very quickly. If you are saying hello to everyone who comes in, they really don't like that over there. No, they want to get right to the point. Um, right. I, I even like, I mean, I like to do some Facebook lives, but then I do repurpose my Facebook lives onto my YouTube. But when I do that, I sh cut off all of the talking and I speed Absolutely. up, you know, some of the stuff that might take me a while, like cutting ribbon or something like that. Because of that, the audience over on YouTube really just wants you to get to the point and they'll let you know. They'll let you know if you're talking yes, too much. They <laughs> yes, they will. I'm always prepared when I go on. It really just makes a better experience for me and it makes a better experience for my audience. So they like you to be prepared. So you really do want to get a little bit prepared before you go on. on yes. So yeah, pre-cut that ribbon, you guys. Pre-cut that <laughs> ribbon. <laughs> yep. So I, we're, I'm not a big television 
person and we don't buy t like brand new TVs all the time. And um, we purchased a new TV, I want to say, I don't know, maybe, maybe a year ago. And it was one of those smart TVs so that we wouldn't have to have a cable box. And as soon as I saw that YouTube app, I thought, oh my word, people are watching YouTube <laughs> on television. Yes, they and, are. And when you start to realize that they're not watching it on their phone, but they're really watching it on television, it, it sort of makes you realize, okay, how much more you really do need to zoom in or get closer or, um, you know, it, it just sort of makes you realize all of these things that you didn't. I, you don't, you kind of take it for granted, but I didn't know because, you know, I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know, you don't know what you don't know. And, um, yeah. So when I realized that, I thought that was really interesting. Um, so I thought I'd mention that because I think a lot of people get used to that mobile device and watching on mobile, but there is a yeah. whole nother world out there with the yeah. television, the smart TVs. So when, yeah. um, so, so back to, you don't just make a video and throw it up there. There's definitely a process that should be in place. Yes. You know, you have to know exactly how to um, put your keywords in correctly. The YouTube algorithm uses the title and the keywords to make suggestions on the side when you show up as a suggestion on the side of someone else's video. So that's one of the greatest ways that you can get found. Well, you have to know how to do that. There's specific tools that you can use in YouTube that are really, really, really helpful. And you really don't have to know how to promote your videos, where you can promote them, what you need to do. There are a lot of steps that you need to take. And some of them you only have to take one time. And then others you have to do each time and you really need to know specifically what you need to do each time so that your video has the best opportunity to be seen. Yeah. Okay. So, and also you don't have to, I mean, yes, there's definitely a system. Um, and the more you know about that system, the better your video is going to perform. But in right. my opinion, it really isn't that hard. Oh, it's not hard. I mean, one of the things that people don't understand or know that they could even do is, you know, rename the video before you upload it, which is huge. And something as simple as just pinning a comment with the keywords That's on the right. comments. Right. I mean, right. it's really not as difficult as, you know, people think I think we hear the, these words like optimize and SEO and it just sort of can go over people's heads and they think it's harder than it is and it really really isn't that hard um, you just need to like take some time to learn the the correct way and then um, absolutely and I, I mean even when I took Lori's course I heard some things I had never heard before and I went back and tweaked some older videos that are still performing well. And it was just amazing the difference. So you can even go back and change. Um, so if oh, you yeah. have older videos, you can yeah. always go back and readjust and, and um, update, which um, I think is really beneficial. And, you know, I think there's also a misconception that you have to be someone who is very um, comfortable with technology for this to work. And you do not. Mm -mm. There really is a very specific way to do this and everyone can do it. You really can do it. You just have to take the time to learn it and follow the steps. As long as you do that, it's, it's like anything else. It's always difficult in the beginning and then it becomes much easier as you continue to do it over and over. And um, the re one of the reasons I really wanted to share this with you guys is because YouTube has been one of the key and you know key factors in growing my business having customers come from YouTube where I get a lot of love and support and you know I do get some customers yeah. from Facebook but it's nothing compared to like the actual convert into a sale um, that I actually get from YouTube so I feel compelled to like share this with you guys um, because I feel you know it's it works for me I know it can work it's working for Lori it, it's working for other creatives and I think that it could also work for you guys um, so Lori, 
you've got this course. I do. And it's called YouTube Success in Six. For, makers. for yeah. makers, yeah. So tell us about that. And then so, we'll get to uh, the questions. Yeah. <laughs> when I first started looking around trying to figure out how I could grow my YouTube channel, I looked for courses everywhere. And there are tons out there, but there are none, there aren't any that are really specifically made for makers. Most of them out there are for marketers, you know, for marketing companies, people who are, are doing that. It's mostly other uh, creatives who are on YouTube who are trying to teach each other how to increase their audience. And there's really a specific set of things that needs to happen for makers. So my course is directed specifically for makers because I knew that there was a lack there, that it was a need and we really needed it. And I've seen a lot of people struggle with trying to make their channel grow. I just really wanted to help. I have spent, you know, three years <laughs> learning my knowledge and I wanted to provide it in a very easy to follow, very detailed manner so that you didn't have questions after you left the training and you knew exactly what you needed to do and how you can grow your business and your channel. Because I feel that if that's something that you really want to do and that's your dream, that you just need the necessary tools to follow it. And I do believe highly that YouTube is one of the best places to start that journey. I completely agree with you on all things that you just said. I mean, I've taken those courses that are like a thousand dollars, you know, yep. and read all two, of the books. I've, I've, I've taken a couple. <laughs> and that is completely yeah. true. What she said that none of them are geared towards, you know, the creative business who are working out of their garages and then trying to right. an Etsy shop. And so, um, when Lori started talking about this, I was like, heck yeah, I'm like the first one on board because I have been watching you with your YouTube channel, just like surpass mine and go way, way past me. And I was always like, you know, what is she doing? What is she doing? And so when she offered this course, I was like, heck yeah. So I could pick her brain. <laughs> um, and so I did go through the course. I went through every step of it and it was very detailed, which I love. None of the courses that I had been through had been that detailed. They all assumed that you were very tech savvy and they knew what, you know, some of these terms were where Lori goes through very step-by-step -step for us who, you know, work out of the home and then they're trying to grow our Etsy shops. And um, I just loved that, you know, she imported, she incorporated like beginner steps, you know, intermediate steps and more advanced steps. So that if you feel like you are maybe a little more on the advanced, maybe you've got some followers and you don't need like all of the beginning stuff, you could just bypass all of that and go straight into the advanced stuff. And I, I kind of liked that segmenting of it, as well as, you know, your Q and A's that you do in your group that you give. Um, and so all of that was very, very beneficial to me. Like I said, after watching her course, I went back and tweaked some of my more uh, popular videos. And I know at least one video, the revenue on it like doubled. And I was just like, Oh my word, you know, this is working. Yeah. This is really working. So <laughs> yeah. it was definitely a benefit for me. And that's definitely where I'm, I'm sharing it with you guys. Um, so glad it was, I know. I, and yeah, so let me just see if there's any questions. Um, all right. So Debbie says, I, I want to do this full time and quit my full time job. So is there a hard, is it hard to work and do this as well? Do you think it's hard? Do you, so you, you were doing that, Lori, weren't you? You I were was, working full time. I was, yeah. I and was, uh, she yeah. wasn't just like clocking in. She was uh, like some like what COO or some like I was a title. chief financial officer and chief operating officer for a hospital. So I worked probably 10 hour days. And um, yes, I did start this while I was working on my job. And yes, it is possible. It does require you to really put forth an effort and you have to realize that for a little while, it's going to be difficult, that you're, you're going to be tired when you get home, but you really just have to uh, put the effort in. However, if you do it correctly, then yes, 
you can quit your job. I did. And I had quite a nice career with quite a nice pay. Um, so yes, I was able to replace that pay with working my business. And it didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. So I've only been doing this for three years. I quit my job a year and a half ago. So it took me around um, 18 months to two years to really get to the point where I could quit my job. However, just having that in, in my sights is really kind of what kept me going, kept mm -hmm. pushing me. So yes, you absolutely can do it. And can I say how pleased I am that that all transpired for you because now you are able to share your God-given talents with all of us even more now that you're able to like give your all to your creative business and I think we are all blessed by it. Um, let's see, Melissa's asking, she's in the middle of pivoting her business and starting a new venture. Is, is now a good time to start with YouTube? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will tell you something. Um, one of the things that you find on Facebook is that when you are doing videos on Facebook, it's better if you're always doing the same type of thing. So if you're making Reese, you always want to make Reese. On YouTube, that is not really the case. You can actually segment off your YouTube channel and do different types of things on it. So if you really are pivoting your business, you can really have several things on your channel because of the way that YouTube is set up. So people will come in, they're only going to watch what they're interested in, but you could actually have several different audiences watching your channel on YouTube. You just can't do that on Facebook. It's very difficult to do on Facebook. So Anita asked the question, what does algorithm mean? <clears throat> okay, so algorithm is actually a artificial intelligence. It is a computer program, right? So they put all these parameters into a computer program and they say, okay, look for how to, you know, when someone types in, when they come into YouTube and they type in how to make a tulip breathe, well, then that algorithm is going to churn and it's going to go through a bunch of different parameters they've set up that then populates what video comes up. So all that really means is technical talk for that's how they the show system, you. Yeah, that's how the system determines what the best video is for you to see. Um, let's see. How do you find all the time and know how to do all of your technical things? Is it necessary to hire outside help for all of this? I'm spending all of my time figuring out how to do all the technical things. Oh, absolutely not. I do all this myself. Well, and then I was going to say, I started the exact same way doing it all myself. And it can be overwhelming, but you really need to know. Yes. That's why we think it's very important for you to know, number one, where is your ideal customer hanging out? Yes. And That's believe fine. me, they are searching Google, okay? And way before they even know to go to Etsy. Some are, some are no, some know to go to Etsy because they've always already been an Etsy, you know, buyer. But they'll go to Google and they're looking at Google Shopping and they should, you should be able to pop up over there as well. So that's why it's really important to know, number one, like who is your ideal customer? Where would they be? And then how do you talk to them on what platform? And believe me, it does yeah. not have to be on all of them. You don't have to be oh, on I, all I social totally media. Agree. I think a lot of people, when they start out, they think they have to do all the things all the right. time. Yeah. You, you really don't. You really need to perfect one thing. So one platform, pick one to start with and really learn it and perfect it. And then you can move on to the another one because it's not going to be so overwhelming as creatives. If, if we get overwhelmed, we're just like, we're done. <laughs> so you really do want to pick one and you have to pick it based on, you know, what's going to be the most beneficial for your company. Okay, I'm just looking for some cute, um, I mean, some questions. So somebody's asked, Lori, you make so many wreaths. Do you sell them all? I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Well, if my mother doesn't take them and put them on the door and hide them in her closet, <laughs> which she does a lot, or my family members don't come and take them home, then yes, I do sell them. So and what I, do you, oh, sorry, go ahead. 
Well, I sell them a lot if I'm going to do like a craft fair or something like that, just because I, I don't have a ton of time to pack them up and ship them. So I don't list them very often. I sell mostly local, you know, a few people who know they'll see something I've made and they just text me and say, I want that. <laughs> so that's kind of how I'm doing it right now. So Michelle Reed asks, what... Hey, Michelle. Yeah, I know. What are the best keywords to use to get found on YouTube? It really depends on what you're making. So it really depends on what you're making. And you really have to use the tools that are on YouTube to make sure that you're using the best keywords. So, for example, if you were going to make a tulip wreath, you know, when you're using those keywords, you're using it based on what you think people are going to look up. And then you need to test those keywords and see if those are what you need to be using. And that's where the tools from YouTube come in. And <clears throat> let's see. Amanda says she can't wait to see us at Reef Makers Live. I know. Yay. We are so excited. So y'all don't know this, but Lori has agreed to like volunteer um, to help us. And she has been like, she's on the executive committee and she has just been such a huge help as y'all can imagine. We all love her. So she's been such a huge help. And I, I'm so, so excited that she's agreed to help us. And we're all going to be there. I just can't, I can't wait. We, we've got I'm some. Excited. We've got some excited things for that for sure. Um, big, big things coming up, so y'all need to make sure you're there. Some things we can hardly even keep our lids oh, on. No. <laughs> hard, it's hard. It's hard not to talk about it. <laughs> and the theme is going to be excellent. So I highly recommend it. We're going to have a lot of fun. So let's see. Julie wants to do YouTube because Facebook makes her a nervous wreck. Yes. Oh, well, I tell you what, a lot of people, when you go live, right, that first time, it's so scary. It, it may be scary for a little while and it does get better. However, the great thing about YouTube is that you can either record it or go live. It does not have to be one or the other. So if you feel more comfortable recording things and uploading them, that works great on YouTube, just like lives do. So either way you do it, it works great. Yes, I, that that's true. That's very true. Um, <clears throat> and I like that you can retake. So I'm just going to share a quick tip for me for when I do quick videos. And then I know you're busy and I'll let you get back to work. But one of the things that I do when I record videos for YouTube is when I first started, I people think that you're supposed to record or like I did record from start to finish. And that is not what has been um, the best system for me. The best system for me is to record in chunks. In other words, I'll create um, like step one of the project. I'll record step two of the project, step three or step four, and right. then I'll record like an introduction and then I'll record um, a closing or, you know, I'll record something else. And that way, if I mess something up, I don't have to record the whole thing from start to finish. I just have to record that right. one section and then I can like right. piece all of them together and like make a seamless uh, video. So that's um, one of the benefits that for me anyway, of recording that some of you guys might find that useful when you're making your videos. You don't have to do it from start to finish. Just do little chunks. Um, let's see. I am putting, I'm putting the link to her course right there. It's pinned to the top. If you want to go learn more about um, her course and then where can we find you again on YouTube? Hardworking mom. Hardworking mom. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else? Not that I can think of. I do want to highly suggest that y'all have a YouTube channel, whether you take my course or not. You really need to have a YouTube channel if you want to grow your business. So, Yes, I agree. Um, let me thank Lori for being here and thank you guys. And if we missed your questions and, or you're watching the replay, we'll come back and monitor the video. But if you, um, you know, also, so don't forget to ask, keep asking your questions below. And if you're watching this video on replay, either on Facebook or YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels so yeah. that you can continue to get uh, videos like this, tips for helping grow your creative business. Bye. Bye, guys.